Hello everyone and welcome to the OKS Computer YouTube channel. My name is Patrick and today we're going to be talking about my record collection. Yes, after all this time, after all these requests I've gotten from all of you, I'm finally going to make a series of videos talking about the records on this shelf that I have been gathering over the past four or four and a half years. And since it's probably going to take a very long time, I'm going to divide it into a series of videos. I definitely can't cover all of these in a single video. So we're going to go based on sections of the shelf and sections of the alphabet. And this first corner here is from A to C. We're going to start right away, right at the beginning, with ACDC, Back in Black. This is an original 1980 pressing of the album. And uh, it's not too interesting in terms of packaging. Just a single sleeve, black vinyl. Uh, it's not super exciting, not very rare, but hey, it's a lot of fun to listen to. I personally think this is the band's best. It's honestly the only ACDC album I plan on having in the collection because I'm not a huge fan of their other works. But I do think that Back in Black, it features so many of their finest songs and it's really peak kind of hard rock of the 80s. When you think of that era of rock music with the glam metal, with hard rock and hair metal and all of that, I think that this is definitely one of the best works in that era of music. And so I'm very happy to have it in the collection, and I highly recommend that you get yourself a copy as well if you can. It's very easy to find, it's very common, but it's a good one to have. So we'll put that on the shelf here, and I'll keep adding to the shelf as I go. And next up, uh, this one is a recent addition to the collection, Animal Collective, Strawberry Jam. I love Animal Collective, one of my favorite musical acts of the past century, I would say. Uh, every single member is a personal favorite musician of mine, especially Panda Bear. And this is one of my favorite works of theirs. Uh, sadly, it is the only Animal Collective I have right now, but I'm hoping to get many, many more of them in the future. And also, this is a great introduction to the sound of the band, uh, that alongside Meriwether Post Pavilion. It's definitely some of their more accessible work. And it's very nice, uh, gateful, with some... Credits and titles on the inside. I love the kind of strawberry jam themed artwork. It looks amazing, very vibrant and colorful. And the vinyl itself uh, is just a plain black, but I love the sleeves. They look so cool. And they continue that kind of very colorful art theme uh, in the gatefold and on the cover. And they have, of course, some lyrics on them if you want to read and or sing along. Uh, vinyl, plain black, 140 gram. It's really, really nice. It sounds great. One of the better sounding records in my collection. Uh, it definitely sounds better than a digital pressing or digital master, I would say. So yeah, if you are a fan of Animal Collective and you're looking for uh, a great record of theirs to add to the collection, I highly recommend you get one of these uh, recent reissue copies of Strawberry Jam. It sounds amazing. All right, moving on here. Now this one... Uh, frankly, this isn't an album that I listen to very often. Uh, it was one that I actually got as a part of a school project. Uh, I was doing some research on, you know, musicians of the 20s and 30s and how popular jazz and big beat were back then. And so I picked up a copy of Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington, uh, The Great Summit. This is a collaborative album of theirs. Uh, and it's very, very nice. Uh, like I said, it's not one that I listen to very often. I mostly got it uh, while I was working on this project just to listen to it for this project. Uh, but it's still a really solid record now that I look back on it. It features some very, very wonderful songs that I highly recommend you listen to. Uh, yeah, another one, very simple, single sleeve, black vinyl, just plain white sleeve for that. Very simple record, very simple packaging. But it's, it's fun to have if you're looking for some nice classic jazz, and it does feature... A very nice recording of It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing, which is an essential song to say the least. So I highly recommend you give this one a listen as well. Uh, moving on, uh, this is another classic. We got the self-titled B-52s album. This is another band that I'm not a huge fan of nowadays. I got this one a while back as a gift, a very nice gift from a family member uh, who knows how much I love, you know, the new wave and the post-punk of the 80s. And the B-52s self-titled record is a perfect example of that kind of sound. It does feature some of my favorite tracks of theirs, uh, especially Rock Lobster. We all love Rock Lobster, because who doesn't? Uh, There's another one, pretty simple, 180-gram uh, vinyl. Uh, comes in a very nice uh, comes in a very nice color sleeve featuring a bunch of other albums that I enjoy very much. Uh, labels do that sometimes, where they feature other albums that they've pressed. This one has a bunch of Miles Davis albums pictured on it. And uh, sorry, lost the timer there for a second. I am running on a timer, so I don't keep you for too long. 
And yeah, just another one, plain black vinyl, but it comes in a very nice sleeve. And the album itself is very, very enjoyable. So if you are a fan of some of those 80s post-punk classics, I highly recommend you give that B-52's album a listen. Sorry, having a bit of trouble getting this back in the sleeve. Oh, there we go. Yeah, B-52's album, very, very good. Speaking of very, very good, uh, gonna take a huge time leap uh, back to the present day with Beach House, Depression Cherry. Now there are a lot of pressings of this album that are very cool, color pressings and clear pressings. Uh, this is not one of them. It is just another plain black vinyl. I promise I have some more uh, interesting albums coming later in the video and later in the series. Uh, but yeah, still though, Beach House, Depression Cherry, this is one of my favorite records of theirs. I personally prefer Bloom now, but this is a very nice record nonetheless. And yep, yeah, plain black vinyl, 180 gram, courtesy of Sub Pop Records. They do a very nice job with their vinyl pressings. Uh, the artwork here is beautiful. I love it. And the sleeve itself is probably my favorite part of it. It is actually a velvet sleeve. I know I can't really show you what that's like, but if you get yourself a copy of it, it is actually a velvet sleeve instead of just a traditional type of texture. It's literally velvet. It's amazing. I love that they decided to do that with the packaging. And it makes it one of the most unique uh, sleeves in my collection. Uh, this is another classic one. Now we've got the Beach Boys with Pet Sounds. Uh, this was one of my favorite albums for a very long time. Uh, recently, I've kind of grown off it. Not that it's gotten worse to me, but I definitely listen to it a lot less. Still, though, having a copy of it is wonderful. This is a classic album. It is the epitome of that kind of Baroque art pop sound uh, that was around in the 60s at the time. And uh, it sounds fantastic on vinyl. I think this is a stereo copy. Is it stereo? Yes, it is. And I highly recommend that you get this one as well. Uh, this is a must-have for any uh, record collector. Up next, uh, this, this next chunk of records I'm probably just going to skip through because they're all very similar. Uh, but it is pretty much every album from the Beatles post-Rubber Soul. So it's everything that they made from Rubber Soul onwards because we've got Sgt. Pepper, Rubber Soul, Revolver. Magical Mystery Tour, White Album, Abbey Road, all of their studio records from Rubber Soul onwards, and also a couple of compilations that I think are very nice, but I'll get to that in the compilations portion of the video. So yeah, all of them are pretty much the same, 180 gram black vinyl, not terribly exciting, but still it's very fun to have those uh, as somebody who is a big fan of the latter half of the Beatles discography. Uh, and anybody who is a record collector should definitely have some Beatles, and so I'm very happy that I do. And up next, this is one that you might not be familiar with, but I still think that a lot of you would enjoy very, very much. Uh, we have Bent Knee with You Know What They Mean. Now, Bent Knee, if you are unfamiliar with them, they are kind of an art rock, art pop band uh, consisting of six musicians, one of which is uh, the popular guitarist and YouTuber Ben Levin, uh, he works a lot with another musical YouTuber, Adam Neely. So you've probably heard of Ben Levin, but I'm not sure if you've heard his music before. And if you have heard his music with Bentney, it is fantastic. Now, this is probably one of their weaker records, to be honest, but it's still stellar front to back. I also really love their records, Land Animal and Shiny Eye Babies. But I heard that they were printing vinyl for You Know What They Mean, so I picked up a copy as soon as I could. I really enjoy this album, and it features some of my favorite tracks of theirs, uh, specifically the song Bone Rage. If you're looking for a good, very accessible album to try and get into the band, if you're not familiar with them, then this is definitely the way to go. You know what they mean, Bentney, fantastic album. Uh, thank you to Ben Levin and everybody at Bentney for making such a great record. All right, up next, uh, this was another pretty recent one. Whoops, gotta fix that. This is another pretty recent one. Uh, this is one that I'm extremely excited about. I did a live stream uh, where I talked about how I got this one very recently, and I am so excited about it. Bjork, Medulla, or, or Medulla, however you say it. But uh, it, it's the one with all of the vocals, the acapella songs. Uh, this is one of my favorite Bjork records ever, uh, and that's amazing coming from somebody who's made as many phenomenal records as she has. Uh, this one's always stood out to me. Uh, while I'm personally more of a fan of like the classics, Homogenic and Vespertine, I think that Medulla really stands out to me because it did something that absolutely nobody was ready for. 
the way that she produced this album, she arranged the vocalist, she picked singers from all kinds of musical backgrounds and cultural backgrounds, everybody from uh, Inuit throat singers to Mike Patton of Faith No More. It's incredible uh, what she did with the creation of this album, and the resulting album is wonderful. It is packed full of quality tracks, and despite their very simple stripped-back production. Uh, it is a truly revolutionary album, and it's in a discography full of revolutionary albums, and I would love to have more of hers someday. Sadly, I do not. However, with this one, I can actually show you some of the packaging because it's a lot more interesting now. Uh, here we have a wonderful gatefold with some hair pieces. There seems to be a fascination with hair in the packaging and also just the marketing for this album in general. There seems to be a lot of focus on wigs and hair pieces, including uh, in the album cover, a very interesting uh, wig that Bjork is wearing. And... You, you see that in the gatefold here. It's yet another example of how Bjork is very, very creative with her art styles and the motifs that she uses to promote her albums. And the vinyl itself is an extremely beautiful kind of red, dark red vinyl. Uh, it's described as maroon. I would agree with that. And it's pretty thin, uh, plays at 45 RPM. And it sounds, frankly, not as good as I hoped it would. Uh, coming from such a rich and complex record. Uh, frankly, the vinyl does not sound as amazing as I thought it would. Uh, it was packed with a ton of surface noise, and that was slightly disappointing. But still, it sounds good, and having the album is enough for me. It's great. One of my favorite Bjork records, like I said. So if you ever find yourself looking for some good Bjork records in the collection, definitely get yourself a copy of Nidula. Okay, up next we have a classic, or classic to me, it was released kind of recently, but I have a lot of fond memories with this album, The Black Keys, El Camino. Now, frankly, I have gotten away from The Black Keys' work in the past several years. I used to be a huge fan of them and of every single thing that they made, uh, but El Camino is the only one that's really stuck with me after all these years. It's another one that features... A, just a ton of, un it, sorry, it features a ton of incredible songs. It's just, it's beyond words describing how cool these songs are. I mean, you've got Lonely Boy, Gold on the Ceiling, Little Black Submarine, Mind Eraser, just classic after classic after classic. It's incredible. It really is. And I can't say that about a lot of other Black Keys records. Uh, this one also comes in a gatefold with a bunch of pictures of cars like the one on the album cover. Uh, it's another plain black vinyl. I think this one's a double album. Oh, nope, it's not. Uh, I was thinking that because the other sleeve actually just holds a huge fold-out poster with a bunch of cars on it. it. It's all cars. It's amazing. I love it when an album comes with a good poster, and El Camino definitely does. It also came with a CD copy of the album as well, uh, and I have that over on the shelf with my other CDs. That's probably a video for another day when I talk about just the CDs. Another plain black vinyl, but uh, this one sounds amazing. Uh, really, really high quality pressing, courtesy of None Such Records. Very, very nice. So I don't know if I plan on getting many other Black Keys records in the collection, uh, but El Camino is here to stay. It is wonderful, and I would probably say it's my favorite Black Keys studio album. I also love Brothers, but El Camino I'd probably say is my personal favorite. All right, moving on here, we've got a couple of recent ones coming up here, such as Black Midi, Schlagenheim, uh, one of my favorite records of 2019. I got a vinyl copy as soon as I possibly could. This album is amazing, and I'm so excited for their second album, which is going to come out next month. I already pre-ordered a copy. I, I'm usually very, very careful with my pre-orders because I want to be sure I'm not wasting my money and I know what I'm getting into, but when it comes to Black Midi, I know it's going to be great, and I knew with Schlagenheim it was going to be great, and it was. This album is one of my personal favorites I've heard in the past several years. It is magnificent, and it's probably one of the vinyl uh, records that I listen to the most. I find myself spinning this pretty much constantly, and the artwork on the inside is gorgeous. Uh, these guys are kings of album art, and Schlagenheim, this gatefold painting, is gorgeous. Love it. It's got lyrics on the bottom to come with it. And got, uh, just look at that. That is beautiful. I think you can see that, right? Looks great. And we've got a, another plain black vinyl. 
I know it's you're developing a pattern here. Uh, it's a lot of plain black vinyl. I swear it gets more interesting later. Uh, but yeah, very nice. I love uh, the chaotic art on the sleeve just as it is in the album cover. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is definitely one that I listen to a lot. It sounds incredible. Uh, Rough Trade always comes through with the quality vinyl pressings. I have some more of theirs uh, coming later as well. And let's take a look at the time, see how much time we have left. Yeah, we've still got some time. I can get through quite a few more of these. And uh, speaking of quality vinyl pressings from great labels, uh, shout out to Relapse Records for Boris and Merzbau 2020 Rest in Peace. Now, I am a huge fan of Boris, I am a huge fan of Merzbau, and when they collaborate, they really make something magical. This is the second time that they've made a full album together. The other one was Gen Show or, or Gen Show. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but these are actually re-recordings of previously released Boris songs, uh, mostly from the album Love and Evil, which wasn't one of their stronger projects. Uh, however, I will say that these re-recordings of them improve so much. They are, I, I would definitely say I prefer these recordings uh, to the original studio counterparts, uh, especially the opener Away From You. It is beautiful. And speaking of beautiful, this one has a fantastic vinyl color. Look at that. So it's, it's white, it's brown, it's pink, and it's splattered everywhere. It's incredible. And every side looks different. I love that. Uh, this was one that I ordered as soon as I heard the album. I know there are some people that were unhappy with how it turned out, and they think that the two are very talented, but overall this is just a pretty repetitive and kind of uh, half-assed record, but I completely disagree. I really enjoyed this, I got a lot out of it, and I think that that re-recording of Away From You was one of my favorite songs I heard in 2020. So I am going to ignore all of the bias, all of the naysayers. I love this album, and I'm so happy to have it in the collection. Love Boris, love Merzbau. Can't wait to get more of theirs in the future. And speaking of artists that I love very, very much, uh, how about we get a couple of David Bowie albums? We have two of them right here, two of them so far. One is Diamond Dogs, and the other is my favorite, Black Star. Now, with Diamond Dogs, I got this as a gift, another very, very kind gift from a family member. Uh, this one comes uh, single vinyl, just, blacks, uh, just black vinyl plain, but sounds very, very nice. Love it. Uh, very high quality recording. And the gatefold is a nice yellow uh, artwork of uh, what seems to be some sort of a city inspired by 1984, the book that inspired it. And it also features a bit of text from Bowie as like a prelude to the album. It's very nice that he does that to kind of guide the concept. It's a very, very cool album. Uh, I think that it's one that not enough people are talking about. It's got ton of classic tracks, and I do think that he did better uh, during this era, and he has definitely done better since, but it's still really nice to have. And then moving on to Black Star, this is what I call my favorite album of his. I think that this is his best work, and I know I'm, I'm not trying to start a debate here. I know that there are a lot of people who love, you know, Ziggy Stardust and Station to Station, Low Heroes, all of those, but Black Star, I don't know. It just it just works for me on every level. It's one of my all-time favorite albums, and I think that Bowie absolutely nailed it with this final record. And speaking of absolutely nailing it, this packaging is phenomenal. So you open it up, you get, of course, a picture of Bowie, and you get a picture of Outer Space. Uh, it's very nice kind of glossy finish on that. It makes it look very, very fancy. And you open this up here, and the record actually... Uh, you take it out of the sleeve and it's just, it's a die cut sleeve with the star in it. And uh, it's just uh, the black vinyl in a plain uh, clear sleeve. And I love how when you take it out, you just have the star that remains. And when you put it back in, you see that it becomes a part of the album cover. I'm gonna try and put it back in the sleeve. Another uh, an issue with this is uh, it's kind of hard to take it in and out of the sleeve, but I love that. I love how you have the label at the center of it. Looks very nice. And on the flip side, you have a huge art booklet with pictures and lyrics from the various music videos, uh, words for all of the songs. And you can't see them at all. You can really only see the art and the lyrics if you hold them up to the light because it's black on black. That's a bit bothersome, uh, but still, you know, it goes with the whole black theme of the album. And it's very, very nice nonetheless, uh, regardless of how uh, hard it is to read sometimes. But yeah, David Bowie, Black Star, I do think this is my favorite album of his, 
and it is a must-have for any Bowie fan and any record collector. Very happy to have it. All right, moving on, we are almost done with the B section, and we have James Brown, Live at the Apollo, classic live record, one of my personal favorite live albums. Although I didn't cover it in the Essentials video, I still think that it is a must hear. Uh, he listen to it as soon as you possibly can if you haven't heard it before. Uh, it is uh, very simple vinyl packaging. Once again, single sleeve, black vinyl. You've heard it all before. I have a lot of those. But still, I mostly got it just to listen to it. It's not necessarily about how pretty it looks or how rare it is. I just really love listening to this album. Uh, so I saw it at a store for a very reasonable price. And I thought, you know what? This is a phenomenal live recording uh, from a phenomenal artist. So I've got to get myself a copy of it. And that medley of, uh, it was like four or five songs that are featured in a single like 12 minute medley. It is phenomenal. And I think it's just called medley on the streaming release. And so I highly recommend if you're just going to listen to one song from this, listen to that medley. It is so good. All right, and moving into the C's, I don't know if we're gonna get all through these because the timer's running out pretty soon. I've been keeping you for a very long time, uh, but gonna try and get through some of the C section albums. And we're gonna start it off with Captain Beefheart, Trout Mask Replica. I love this album and I am tired of pretending it's bad. It is so good. This is one of my favorite albums. This is honestly worthy of an album breakdown. There are so many things I could possibly say about this record that I can't possibly cover in a short blurb in a vinyl collection video. But I will say that uh, the better pressing of the album, as we all know, is the Third Man Records pressing. They did a huge deluxe, and it came with a super fancy color vinyl and an actual replica trout mask. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a copy of that before it sold out, and then it was up for resale on Discogs for absurd prices. Uh, but And so I was a bit uh, disheartened by that and the lack of trout mask replica in the collection. However... Uh, there was a Record Store Day pressing. Miraculously, they brought it back for Record Store Day. I think it was 2019 that they did this. And so as soon as I heard that, I was like, I got to get a copy of this. I've got to have this as soon as possible. And so here it is. Trout Mask Replica in all of its absurd glory. You got a picture of the band on the back and also in the gatefold. Uh, that A similar picture of the band, but with all these crazy colors and also a track list on the side. Well, that's over here. It's pretty hard to read because uh, the the bright pink uh, makes it pretty illegible, but that's all right. And you open it up, you get um, a nice, I think, yeah, I think this is another 180 gram black vinyl. Sounds awesome, uh, considering how bizarre and how weirdly mixed the album is. The vinyl actually sounds stellar. And then you take a look at this. It's got a very nice uh, lyric fold-out poster with the words to every single song on the album. Uh, I think the songwriting is one of my favorite aspects of this album. And now you can read along as he recites all of that absurd uh, spoken word and barely sung poetry. It's a really wonderful thing to have. And it's got a picture here of, uh, I think that's Captain Beefheart just at a younger age. And it says Trout Mask Replica on it. And uh, so, yeah, I love having those lyrics. I love how the vinyl sounds. It's just, it's a wonderful record to have. I love this Record Store Day pressing, although I'm sad I missed out on the Third Man Records pressing. I think that this is wonderful to have, and if you can find a copy of it, you gotta have it. It is so good. I will definitely do an album breakdown on Trout Mask Replica someday. And uh, another artist that's worthy of a breakdown, I'll probably do an evolution video on this artist, is Car Seat Headrest. And I got a copy of Twin Fantasy, Face to Face. This is the 2018 re-recording, and it is Phenomenal. It's, I actually think this is his best work to date. And uh, Mirror to Mirror, the 2011 original version that went up on Bandcamp and kind of became uh, an underground Bandcamp classic, I think it's great. Uh, however, the mixing is just far too rough and muddy and cluttered and chaotic uh, for me to really get something fulfilling out of it. And then when I heard this 2018 re-recording, they absolutely nailed it. And Will Toledo is such a talented artist and Twin Fantasy had so much potential that I don't think was fully reached until he recorded it in a pr professional setting. And uh, so, yeah, that track list on the back, very plain packaging, but that's okay. Because then when you open it up, you see this lyric, uh, you see the lyrics are all jammed into, uh, are all jammed into the sleeve because uh, this is a dense album in terms of songwriting. And so now you can read along on the sleeve 
as you listen. And uh, I quite like how they do include, I think, the full monologue from Nervous Young Inhumans in the lyrics. Uh, that's a bold choice to make since it takes up a ton of space. But yeah, plain black vinyl. Uh, looks beautiful. Sounds beautiful. It's a wonderful album. One of my personal favorites. Uh, and I do think it's the best that Will has done to date. Uh, love you, Car Seat Headrest. Love you, Will Toledo. Uh, can't wait to hear more from you in the future. Can't wait to get more of yours in the collection. And we're going to be running out of time here pretty soon. Uh, however, I at least want to get to these last two. Uh, we'll probably cut it in the middle of the seas and continue the rest in a later video. Uh, but this is probably going to be the last two for today. But it is a double album, and it is one that I am so incredibly happy about. Number One Angel and Pop 2, Charlie XCX, the double mixtape. It is actually here, and it is actually in my hands. It is insane that I, I have these. I found them at a record store miraculously. I wanted to double check and be sure that they weren't bootlegs because I know that there are bootleg pressings of these. But no, I checked with the record store owner. I checked the labels and everything and they are indeed legit. And I actually have them. It is so surreal to think I'm actually in possession of these albums. And for those of you who don't know, Charlie XCX, uh, famous pop singer as of now, uh, she released this double mixtape, two different albums. Uh, under the PC Music label. Uh, her first full releases to be under PC Music, if you don't count the Vroom Vroom EP. And she had a very limited vinyl pressing that was only a uh, couple hundred copies, I think. And it sold out almost immediately and was and has been out of print for several years. I somehow came across these at a record store and I can't believe I actually found them. And they were there for a very reasonable price because uh, normally they would go up for like hundreds or something. And uh, these were surprisingly cheap in comparison. And uh, it's just, once again, single sleeve uh, for each of these. But this time it's a clear vinyl. It's clear. And it sounds beautiful. I am so grateful that I am in the possession of these two wonderful albums from one of the best pop singers functioning today. Charlie XDX, absolutely fantastic. I love her discography and I am so grateful to be in possession of these two brilliant groundbreaking albums uh, especially when they are uh, as rare as this so yep uh, thank you charlie and thank you to my local record store for somehow having these and i think that since we're, we're coming up on 30 minutes uh, that's a long time so i think i'm probably going to cut it off there and continue with uh more videos in the series uh, at a later date i am so very excited to continue talking about my record collection and i hope you enjoyed uh, those records that I just talked about today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, remember to like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Follow my other social media profiles for more content every day and give my new EP a listen. I think you'll like it. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you all have a very nice day.